Do you know what's a virus? It's a link between living and non-living beings. China's live animal markets are a threat, yes. An even bigger threat is China's virus bank. You heard that right, a deadly bank of viruses. Before I tell you the story, here's a theory that has been doing the rounds. That this coronavirus was a biological weapon that was made in a lab and unleashed on the world. Let me be very clear, there is no evidence to back this theory, so we'll not dwell on it. What we will discuss instead is what we can prove, China's virus bank. It's a fact that China has invested huge amounts of money to study viruses. China has built a giant lab in Wuhan. It is called the Wuhan Institute of Virology. The website of this institute declares that it has preserved more than 1,500 different strains of viruses. The same page declares that this facility is the largest virus bank in Asia. Take a look for yourself. Technically, there's nothing wrong with all of this. It's a lab after all. So why should the world be wary? The world should be wary because the safety practices of these labs are under question. The Wuhan Institute of Virology is the only lab in China which is equipped to handle the coronavirus. But it's not the only lab studying such viruses in China. There are others. And they're not equipped to handle viruses. A report by the Washington Times makes a major claim. Chinese government researchers isolated more than 2,000 animal viruses. Strategic affairs expert Brahma Chelani says that there are serious doubts about China's ability to handle deadly viruses. There are two Chinese labor laboratories located very close to the Wuhan wet market that are studying bat coronaviruses. Both these labs have for years been studying that coronaviruses and, and the theory is that this virus accidentally escaped from one of these two labs, that there have been videos of Chinese researchers securing that viruses, wearing no protective clothing, wearing no face masks and working from safety two labs. Safety two labs have no safeguards against accidental escapes, uh, escape of viruses. Such viruses should be only studied in safety four labs. This is an international standard. But, they, but we know from Chinese videos and from Chinese state media publications that these viruses and research on viruses was being conducted even in safety two labs, which are not equipped for dealing with or researching deadly viruses. And if the coronavirus outbreak is any proof, it shows that China does not like playing by the rules. It doesn't follow international standards. It doesn't bother with transparency. For some, the situation brings back memories of the Chernobyl disaster. Is the Wuhan coronavirus outbreak China's Chernobyl? Some Chinese believe so. Two months back, China had ordered a draconian lockdown to stop the virus from spreading. For some Chinese citizens, this was Beijing's Chernobyl moment. They went on a Chinese website known for its movie reviews, something like the IMDb of China. They opened a listing of a TV show based on the Chernobyl disaster and flooded the comment section. Look at these comments. Chinese citizens were comparing the lockdown to the disaster in Chernobyl. There are three reasons why the Chernobyl disaster became a metaphor for the coronavirus outbreak. One, both are disasters that could have been avoided. Two, 
Both became worse because of government mismanagement. And three, both saw the government crushing questions and voices of dissent. If and when the world gets down to demanding answers from China, the role of China's virus banks must be investigated. Monday, we took you inside coronavirus country. We fact-checked China's claims. We showed you the truth of Wuhan, the epicenter of the coronavirus outbreak. It is far from normalcy. Tonight, we bring you the second part of our series, Inside Coronavirus Country. How the threat from China is not over, far from it. But we begin with the question, where did this virus originate? Today, China will refuse to accept responsibility, but here's a quote from the month of January. This is from Gao Fu. Director of China's Center for Disease Control and Prevention. Gao Fu said, and I'm quoting, and listen to this, the origin of the new coronavirus is the wildlife sold illegally in a Wuhan seafood market. What the Chinese call a wet market. The virus spread. So China shut all such wet animal markets. The virus is still killing thousands of people. But guess what? China is re reopening the wet animal markets and we have multiple reports to substantiate this. Let's start with this, the Hunan seafood market in Wuhan. It's believed to be the birthplace of the coronavirus. When the disease spread, the government went into an overdrive. The Chinese government cleaned every corner of the site and in the process, China destroyed all evidence of the origin of the virus. That was more than two months ago. China has since then systematically destroyed evidence. So no one can say for sure what really happened at this Hunan seafood market in Wuhan. But here's the thing. China's People's Congress voted on the 24th of February to close down all the wet animal markets in the country. Clearly, they were linked to the outbreak. Now, the whole world is still struggling, but China may be reopening these wet markets. Tonight on Gravitas, we bring you the first images. And once again, we begin with Wuhan. This is what the wet animal market now looks like. Hidden behind this blue-colored partition, two months since the shutdown, officials are operating cautiously here. There is police tape on the scene to limit access. Some people in white hazmat suits can be seen. News agency AFP says the fate of the market is sealed. It could face permanent closure. But that does not mean an end to such trade. If you thought this pandemic spells the end of China's wet markets, I'm afraid you're mistaken. China did ban them for a while, but it hasn't stopped live animal trade. A week ago, Al Jazeera reported that traders are using e-commerce platforms to sell quote-unquote wildlife products. Beijing reportedly ordered a crackdown. It banned the sale of wildlife two months ago. But within a few weeks, 17,000 accounts were closed. Information about 140 wildlife products was wiped off. The crackdown has not killed China's appetite for exotic animals. The Daily Mail has published another report. Their reporter visited a live animal market in southwest China in Guilin. The report claims that these traders are back in business and wild animals are up for sale again. This includes exotic animals like bats, scorpions, rabbits, even dogs and cats. Live animal markets or wet markets are hotbeds for disease in China, a place where animals are slaughtered and sold. Live and dead animals are kept together. Such markets are breeding grounds for new viruses. In China's case, they're disease incubators. And there's history to back this claim. A similar script played out during the SARS outbreak in 2003. It is believed that SARS came from a market in Foshan in China. It spread to 29 countries. It killed more than 700 people. The Wuhan coronavirus is proving to be worse. It has reached 178 countries and regions, killed more than 38,000 people. We're still counting. China has been repeatedly warned against such live animal markets, even advised to shut them down. We reported this in the past. But China paid no heed to such warnings. An article from a journal in 2007 warned Beijing against live animal markets. This says that there is a large reservoir of SARS-like viruses in horseshoe bats, something that is consumed in China. The article warns that consuming horseshoe bats in the culture of eating exotic mammals in southern China is a quote-unquote time bomb. What did China do about it? Nothing. Twelve years later, another warning came. China's own medical experts wrote this. And the article is what I'm quoting. It warned about a pandemic 
like this. It said that it is highly likely that China will have to deal with a SARS or MERS-like coronavirus outbreak. This report was published last year in the month of January. What did China do about it? Nothing again. Now, if the fresh claims are true, Beijing is taking no lessons. It has unleashed another pandemic. It is reopening wet animal markets. There are hundreds, hundreds of such markets all over China, all incubators of disease. Food choices are fine, but practices which put the entire world in peril cannot and should not be allowed. इनके साथ साल जाइए नहीं काट में अरे यार वो यहाँ पर कलेक्टर साहब ही इंतजार कर रहे हैं दोस्त। जी 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 हम क्या से नहीं हैं ठीक है तैयार हो कि जल्दी है जल्दी आ रहे हैं ना
अरे बैठिए बैठिए ना आप बंद करिए बंद करिए दरवाजा तमाशा बना दिए हैं भैंसूत